Chapter 6, isn't it? Chapter 7, right? Seven? No, chapter 11. 11? Okay. John. <laughs> okay. I was trying. All right, if, uh, if someone would, would read the, the first 10 or 12 verses and then somebody else read the Sorry, I'd be glad to. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, though the whom you love is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister, and Lazarus. And when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. And then after that, saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. And his disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and thou goest thou thither again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I might awake him out of sleep. Would you, somebody pick it up in verse 12? Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they <clears throat> thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. <clears throat> then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, uh, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. <laughs> then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was down unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard, that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Want to keep going? Yes, keep going. Okay. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had said, and so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, Master, come and call it for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come on to the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which <clears throat> were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, 
she goes down to the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where hath he laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, <clears throat> how he loved him. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Are we going to pick up there? And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. For he had been dead for four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou should, thou should see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hast hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with great clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto him, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came unto Mary had seen the things which Jesus had believed on him, but some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we for this man doeth many miracles? If we let him alone, all men will believe upon him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our places and our nation. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, saith unto them, you know nothing at all, nor consider it that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this faith came out of himself, but being high priest that year, to prophesy that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that he should also gather together one in the children of God that were scattered abroad. And then from that day forth, they took counsel uh, together for to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto the country near unto the wilderness and to a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out into the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then saw they for Jesus spake among themselves, as he stood in the temple, what think ye that he will not come to the feast? Now both the, priest, chief, uh, the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it that they might take him. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for bringing us to this time, to this point, to this point. We pray tonight, Father, no man will see here or see me, but see and hear you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. The crime takes diverse directions. And this is especially true with robbers. Thieves steal on a great variety of items with all kinds of different techniques. And <clears throat> one of the most unusual kinds of burglary is what we call grave robbery. During that, what happens there is uh, intruders, they, they go inside a cemetery and they dig up uh, the graves and, uh, and they steal valuables out of the coffin. They get all the jewelry and rings and stuff that are there. Now, let me tell you this. 
stole steel. Jesus stole bodies from the grave. <laughs> you see, he commanded some to return from the dead. And one of those people was a man named Lazarus. And here we, we picture where the graveside of Lazarus and Jesus stood there. And he stood in the prince of life itself. And he said, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And this is another great I am saying on the Bible. So let's notice tonight why Jesus claimed to be the Prince of Life. And I want to share three reasons with you why he was. First off, in the beginning, Jesus is the beginning. Amen. Jesus is the beginning of all life. He is the only one capable of creating physical life. He is also responsible for the beginning of physical life. Jesus was also responsible for the, for the initiation of spiritual life. When we open our hearts to, to Jesus, we begin to live. Do you remember that moment when, when you, Jesus Christ came into your life and and you, you, mm. you were saved and you knew it and you you could say even so come Lord Jesus yes. you know, and secondly Jesus is the fullness of life Jesus so many times he spoke of, of living an abundant life and by this he, what he meant was that, that he brings full life and when we accept Jesus, we can have victory in Jesus. Victory over the sins of life. Victory over, uh, over everything. We can live each and every day victorious in, in the power of that indwelling Holy Spirit. And we can have deliverance from, from all the fears and the frustrations of life. Jesus brings meaning to life. Amen. He brings a better life. He brings life in the fullest. And then thirdly, Jesus is the future of life. There are so many people today that are talking about life after death. And a lot of books have been written on the subject. But trust in Jesus Christ is the all that really matters. Trust in Jesus Christ really, it results in life beyond the grave. Because Jesus opens the door of death and he opens it for one reason, for the continuation of life. And I, I told some of them up at the Harley just a few days ago, we were talking about death. And uh, I, I try to find these opportunities to put something in and they'll stick in their mind. And I said, well, let me tell you this. I said, the uh, old city police chief, he and I are the same age. He's three months older than I am. And I said, let me tell you this. If in the morning you hear that Thomas Vickers is dead, don't you believe it? I'll be more alive than I have ever been in these 80 years. Amen, brother. I will be with Jesus Christ. Amen. And I hope that y'all will come and join us very soon. But when we accept Jesus, we have that victory in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Victory over sin and, the, and life. And, and we live each day with the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. And we can have that to 
benevolent from fear or from, and from frustration because Jesus brings us a better life. He brings us a life in the fullness. And Jesus is the future of life. People today, like I said, they're talking all about death and heaven. So many books have been written about it. And, uh, but trust in Jesus Christ. That is result in life beyond the grave. So Jesus opened that door. And he opened that door of death for one reason, for the continuation of life. And Jesus assured us that not only of life after death, but of a full life here on earth when we trust him as our Savior and Lord. Yeah. So let me thank each and every one of you tonight for placing your trust in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And what a thrill it is to look out and know that if he comes right now, we're all going up with him. And if he comes for us individually, we're all going to be together Hallelujah. sooner or later. Amen. 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 Thank you. You pray with me.